This story is about a secret restaurant in Madrid. Oh, yes, tapas. No, we are here for a Chinese treat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How did we get down here again? <laughs> Buckle up. That's a long story. It all started when we got a tip saying Madrid had the secret Chinese restaurant. The most authentic food ever, but very hard to find. Let's go! There was no email, no proper address, all reviews pointed to a mysterious underground location. We called the one number available. No response. Oh, what a shame. No, wait, we didn't give up that easily. We got a friend in Madrid to get to the bottom of it, and she got us the right directions. Good thinking. I got it. I got it. There are no signs, so follow these steps. We got to Madrid and followed the very detailed instructions. Take notes, people. Go to Plaza de España. Check. Get to the southeast corner. Check. Find the parking lot entrance. Go down the stairs. Double check. Oh, look, a sign for the restaurant. Remember, there are no signs. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Go down more stairs. Go through the corridor. Walk a bit. Whoa, 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 wait. I think that's it. And that's how you find Cafeteria Yulung Zoo. <laughs> Better known as Dishasu. Everyone meet Yulung Zhu and Lu Feng Zhu. <laughs> and these two serve some of the most genuine Chinese food in Spain. Mmm, that looks so good. These delicacies are not just your average Chinese dumplings. They're from the couple's hometown, Xinjiang, in the surrounding province, Zhejiang, in southeastern China. It's actually where the majority of Madrid's Chinese population is from. Like, really like it. For a restaurant that was this hard to find, it seems like this place never stops going. You gotta tell us who does your marketing. Ah, come on, mate. What about one for us? <laughs> we'll take that as a maybe. Ah, oh, that was totally worth the trouble. Please, can we start filming now? I am really hungry. Cristo Y llevo construyendo esta catedral 53 años. Yo cuando empecé a, a empezar la catedral era joven, ahora ya mayor, pues a nueve ya es mucho. No he estudiado la arquitectura, soy un labrador. Tenemos ahí Salones parroquiales, los claustros, tengo un batisterio, que es la entrada, en esa cúpula y la crista, claro, con una, una escalinata que no, no la hay en Madrid esa. No quiero materia, dinero nada. Y entonces lo he desechado, incluso en mi casa. Es imposible que yo termine la catedral en vida, porque queda muchísimo que hacer. Pues la esperanza que tengo yo de esta catedral, cuando yo me muera, pues se lo dejo en las manos divinas. Yo no, no sé dónde llegará, ¿eh? Se, el ángel se carga de ello, ¿eh? A mí me gustaría que me enterraran en esta catedral, que eso es muy importante, ¿eh? para mí. 
For a castle straight out of a fairy tale, look no further than the Alcazar of Segovia. Located in central Spain, the Alcazar of Segovia is one of the country's most visited and distinctive landmarks. Built in the 12th century, the Alcazar has served many functions over the years, a fortress, a royal palace, a state prison, an artillery college, and most recently, a museum and military archive. However, its most famous function could arguably be that it served as an inspiration in some of the most iconic Disney films. The similarities between Sergovia and Cinderella can be found in the building's brick facade, turrets, and location, perched high above the neighboring countryside. Walt Disney also went on to reproduce Segovia as the Queen's Castle in Snow White, with it appearing in the film in its almost exact form. If you can make it up more than 150 stairs to the top of the tower, you will be rewarded with stunning views fit for a queen. Este restaurante no ha cerrado las puertas desde 1725, entonces son 293 años los que llevamos aquí trabajando, continuamente sin cerrar. La bodega de 1590 es todo súper antigua, es como entrar en el pasado. Respiras historia. Me llamo Luis Javier Sánchez Álvarez, soy director adjunto del restaurante Botín. Una de las cosas más importantes del restaurante es el horno, la joya, esa es la joya de la corona. El horno no se apaga desde hace 293 años. Repito, 293 años, nunca se apaga. Tiene que mantener el calor por la noche y asar por la mañana. Es por eso el motivo de que nunca se puede apagar. Ahí hay un aroma especial, es increíble el horno. El plato estrella de la casa es el cochinillo. El cochinillo es especial. La piel está muy crujiente, con la leña de encina se le da último toque, entonces la piel suena, clas, 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 eso es un manjar, una delicia. Las recetas son antiguas de cuando los abuelos empezaron el restaurante. Se ha continuado con esas recetas de siempre, entonces son exactamente igual que cuando el abuelo empezó en la cocina y enseñaron a los cocineros y eso siguió la tradición, enseñándose de unos a otros, unos a otros, unos a otros. Los nuevos restaurantes de hoy son platos muy certificados, todo muy diseñado, con dibujitos. Nosotros no podemos hacer eso. Nosotros le damos un buen cochinillo con unas buenas patatas, un buen plato de jamón, que se ponga el culo la servilleta aquí uno a disfrutar y a ser felices. Yo aquí ya 41 años y es como mi casa. Yo aquí estoy como se dice pez en el agua. Es importante mantener las tradiciones y las comidas, que no se pierdan, las recetas antiguas. Imagínense que esto se cerrara y las recetas se perdieran. Drama, digo yo. Esperemos que todo siga adelante, continuado y que sigamos muchos años aquí. The main difficulties of working with any vulnerable or fragile work of cultural heritage is the respect you have to have for that object. Technology is at a point right now where we can record the surface of an object down to fractions of a millimeter. And it's through this kind of understanding that allows you to communicate across time and across cultures. The task of heritage protection and preservation is a real challenge. The mission of Factum Foundation is to record cultural heritage. So in the event that there's a disaster or an accident, we have the data to know what was there exactly as it is. 
we're pioneering a number of methods to return that information into the physical world. We're doing CNC milling, we're doing 3D printing, but we're trying to go beyond that. A facsimile of the Borgarini Chapel, the facsimile of the tomb of Tutankhamun in the Valley of the Kings, an exact facsimile of Veronese's wedding at Cana. The biggest project that's going on at the moment is an exact facsimile of the tomb of Seti I, which will be given to the people of Egypt as soon as it's finished. 200 years ago, the concern was not one of preservation. The concern was one of Indiana Jones and discovery and excitement and cultural acquisitions. The tombs in the Valley of the Kings lasted successfully for 3,000, 3,500 years. But since they've been visited, they start to decline and decay rapidly. I think the facsimile is opening up a whole new level of possibility for display, preservation, conservation, restoration, communication, dissemination of what's important about these objects. If only we can preserve it like it is and document it and hand it on to future generations, then there's hope. The Mesquita has always been a spiritual place, but has not always been occupied by the same religion. Nowhere else in the world will you find a cathedral built inside the walls of a mosque. Originally the site of a temple to the Roman god Janus, the Mesquita was built as a mosque after Cordoba came under Moorish rule in the late 7th century. Then, in 1236, the city of Córdoba came under Christian rule and the Mesquita was converted to a church. Four centuries later, a cathedral was constructed in its center and it became a home for the town's Roman Catholics. While the cathedral is an example of classic Catholic Baroque architecture, the majority of the Mesquita's construction is a result of the work of Islamic architects. Features like 856 columns and symmetrical arches give the illusion of infinite space. These elements are examples of why the Mesquita is considered one of the greatest accomplishments in Islamic architecture in the world. Today, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Over a million people visit every year, and after all its history, it is now seen as a site of religious significance to both Catholics and Muslims. <laughs>